It's midwinter, and what better place to go when the snow's down to the Tower of London? Yes, we're going back in history, and we're going today to go and walk around the battlements. And what a day to do it. Nothing like doing it on a crisp winter's day. And if you're thinking, what are battlements? Basically, it's the wall that goes around the outside of the Tower of London. So you get fantastic views, but also you feel like you're one of those troops that might have guarded the kings and queens way back in history. It's a beautiful day for it, so let's go. Let's go and have a lovely walk inside the Tower of London. Now, if you've never been in here before or haven't seen any videos on it previously, yes, they are cobbled streets, which give you that immediate impression that you are stepping back through history. Okay, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna climb up the wall here, and then we're going to take a trip along the outside. And we're gonna start off with the St. Thomas's Tower. This vantage point here, you get a fantastic view around the inside. Here, you're looking at Traitor's Gate, which is where they used to bring the prisoners in from the River Thames. And then as we sort of go round, you've got the Wakefield Tower where they used to hold prisoners and also the entrance which leads round to the Bloody Tower as well. In our video today, we're literally gonna take you around the wall, but we will be back during the year to show you different towers here at the Tower of London so you can see more inside. If you're looking at that Tudor construction right in front of you, that is where the Royal Mint was. Yes, it was the original Royal Mint and was there for many, many years. Because the Tower of London is situated right on the Thames, you're gonna get some beautiful views. The first tower that we've walked through on the battlement is St. Thomas's Tower, which was built by Edward I in the late 1270s, and he used the rooms there to meet important visitors and conduct business in front of a huge fireplace, which we will bring you. Now, this is the White Tower, and we're also going to do a visit to here very, very shortly as well and bring you that video. Because the battlements were used as a defence, they were higher up, so you get great views from them. So the ability to walk down them today and almost imagine yourself defending the Tower of London is a great feeling. And of course, as you look out to the Thames, you have the fantastic Tower Bridge and then across to the South Bank as well. We've been to Tower Bridge previously and we've got a video for that and I'll put that in the top right hand corner. That'll show you inside there. Okay, let's continue our walk down the battlement. And if you're looking at lots of people and they've got headphones on, that's because when you come to the Tower of London, you can get the headphones in all different languages, giving you all the details of everything you could possibly want to know here at the Tower of London. Many people ask me, why have I got a channel in London? I could have had a YouTube channel or whatever I fancied. And it's because of what you're looking at here. It's where old meets new. You've got history dating back to 1066 here at the Tower of London. And then right behind it, you've got brand new skyscrapers of the city of London. And it all just seems to fit together. It's old meets new, fantastic. Right, enough looking at the views from all around, let's continue our walk down the battlements. If you really wanted to, you could walk around the battlements in about five minutes. That takes you around three sides of the Tower of London. But actually, you'd miss out on some of these fantastic views. So not only have you got Tower Bridge, which we've shown you already, and across to the Thames, you could also see the walkway right here in front of the Tower of London. Also, I always think when you're doing something, always look back because it gives you a second chance to look at things from a different direction. And here we're looking at St. Thomas's Tower, which we've just walked through, but it takes you from one side across over the top of the walkway and onto the inner circle of the Tower of London. Right, now we're approaching Lanthorn Tower. And for another time, when we bring this to you, you'll find there are rare objects in here dating back from the time of Henry III and Edward I. And because these buildings are so old, you do have to duck down, otherwise you're gonna have a very sore head at the end of it.
The Tower of London is like its own little village, and here we're looking at the pub inside the Tower of London called The Keys, which is not open to the general public, it's open to the people that only live here. So it's one of the sort of closed off areas, but if you didn't look over the battlements, you'd completely miss it. As you walk along the battlements, just there to remind you what these were actually here for, you've got metal figures who are standing there ready guarding. Now I think everyone's slightly concerned what he's pointing that spear at. Our next tower is the Salt Tower, and once we go through here, we're then on the east side of the Tower of London. Now, in the Salt Tower, scratched in the walls, you'll find graffitis in here from almost 500 years ago, which is incredible to believe, and yes, we will bring this to you. And as we look back on the battlement that we've actually walked on, you might see there's an elephant head. And the reason for that is, of course, London Zoo was originally based here at the Tower of London before it moved out many years ago to Regent's Park. Whilst in this video we're going to give you a brief overview of some of the history for the Tower of London relating to the parts that we've been to, if you want to know the whole history of the Tower of London, then you need to find our podcast on your favourite podcast provider. If you go in put London Visited, you'll find that we've got podcasts, we did a couple of episodes on it, on the whole history of the Tower of London. Really hope you're enjoying our video on the Tower of London, and if you are, you know what to do. Give us a thumbs up, will you? Because that will help spread this video to more people on YouTube so that they can love London as well. Here we're approaching the Broad Arrow Tower, which was built in 1240s, it's almost a thousand years old. But from the 14th century, the tower was connected to the government department, which was responsible for the royal supplies, which is called the wardrobe. Today, the tower has been represented as a guard tower, which was its original use. Now here on the eastern battlements, this recreates the atmosphere of the fortress in operation where the garrison would have assembled in case of attack. And once again, you've got more uh, models of men standing over the edge of the wall ready to fight. And the wooden roof we're currently standing under would have been something similar to which would have protected the guards at the time. But now on the eastern battlements, they're fighting the traffic coming off Tower Bridge, as you can see all lined up here. It's really quite a strange feeling because when you're walking around the Tower of London you are absolutely steeped in history and it's very easy to get carried away with that history and then you get to parts like this and you look out and you see modern London and you think wow actually we're still sitting in the middle of a major city. Here we're approaching the Constable Tower, which would have been another really important part of the fortress to stop people getting in, especially with the small windows so people could see out. They could also fire weapons out of the windows, but because they were so small, not much could get back through the other way. Our next tower on the battlement is the Martin Tower. Now this actually signifies the end of the Eastern Barricade and then goes to the northern part of the barricade around the Tower of London. Between the years 1669 and 1841, the Crown Jewels were kept in the Martin Tower. Today, the tower actually houses the Crowns and Diamonds exhibition, which tells the story of the English royal crowns. As you can see, we're looking now at the building which houses the Crown Jewels, which is right there, and that is known as the Waterloo Barracks. Good to see the Crown Jewels didn't have to move that far at all. And as you can see, it's another part of the Tower of London about to celebrate its 1000th year. As you come out of the Martin Tower, you're now on the northern battlements. So you've got the view over the city of London. But it was also around here this summer that we had the Super Bloom exhibition on, where they'd filled the moat with lots and lots of wildflowers, actually 20 million wildflowers. Now, if you haven't seen the video on that, I'll put a link to that up in the top right hand corner for you, because that is absolutely beautiful. Right, let's continue our walk.
The northern battlement is the last battlement we can take you walking down because on the western side of the Tower of London, whilst it has a battlement, it's a private quarters for the beef eaters, the yeomans and the guards and the people that live here. So you can't walk down that section of it. So you can do three parts. And if you're thinking, I've seen three monkeys sitting on a wall, that's because London Zoo was once based here, so they've got animals dotted around. As a reminder of this is where London Zoo actually started from. Can you imagine coming here at the time to meet the king and queen and just being really, really careful where you stand, just in case there's the odd lion or tiger right by you? Now, interestingly, the towers here on the northern battlements are taller than the other towers. And the reason for that is so it could command the rising ground beyond the fortress. So if people were approaching from the north, they'd see these more imposing towers facing them. The previous tower we came to was called the Brick Tower. This is the Boyer Tower. Now, this tower was used as a location for checking and the finishing of small arms parts after the original workshops on the wharf were closed down. Apparently fire broke out here in 1841, setting the whole of the tower's grand storehouse, where the Waterloo Barracks is now, which is the building which is just to our left, setting it all alight and threatening the whole fortress. Here's a piece of advice for you, which so many people don't do. When you're doing these sorts of tours, when you're walking around and you're looking at things, always look back behind you because you'll get to see things from a different perspective. You'll also get to see them from a different perspective that lots of people don't because they don't stop to look around and see what's going on. And believe you me, you'll get twice the enjoyment from whatever it is you're doing. And it's just lovely looking back through here, seeing all the towers in a row. This is the Flint Tower. It's the last tower on our battlements walk and it was originally a 13th century mural tower. If you're like many of our viewers that watch this channel because you just love the history of London, then I've put a playlist for you of our historical videos up in the top right hand corner showing you some of London's great history. So as we finish our walk along the battlement, I can promise you we've got lots more videos to come of the Tower of London. Some of the individual towers which have been featured here, but also across the middle as well of the Tower of London. So what was your favourite part? What did you like most about this battlement walk? Do let us know in the comments down below. It'd be really interesting to see. The fantastic thing about London, as you can see here with the Shard overlooking the Tower of London, is this mix of old and new. And also another fabulous thing is when you're walking around London, you don't know when you're going to walk across something which actually dates back from a good thousand years ago. And we've got so many videos showing you some of these things. But what I'm going to leave you with is a video of the Palace of Westminster, which is over in the Houses of Parliament, which again is steeped in history. So if you haven't seen that video, I've put a link to it up in the top right hand corner. So click on that and I'll see you over in the Houses of Parliament very shortly.